Kama family. It's good that we can all meet together again this morning. You might be wondering why I'm not back at work from my vacation in Mexico. Yes, I had a great time, but because of this coronavirus pandemic, anyone who traveled outside of Canada was asked to self-isolate at home for 14 days, just to ensure that we didn't pick up the virus and as a result, not spread it to anybody in the home. So until that time's over, which is coming up tomorrow, Monday, I wanna take an opportunity to just share a message that's on my heart to you today. But do know I'm missing seeing all of you and I look forward to seeing you all again in person tomorrow. Like I shared with you in our Bible study this week, although life is full of uncertainty, I wanna tell you that we can all experience an inner sense of God's peace in the midst of the circumstances we find ourselves in. The reality of this world is that life is outside of our control. And as a result, there are gonna be moments in our lives, moments like this, where we feel like our faith is being tested and we're being called to live out our faith as we profess to be believers in the midst of the difficult circumstances. So today I just want to say if, if it's okay, it's okay if you're struggling a bit as the days pass by and as you wait for the cloud of uncertainty to lift. My friends, do not lose sight of him who will keep in perfect peace just like it says in Isaiah 26 verses 3 to 4. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. I want to encourage you that no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what's happening in our crazy world, you can experience perfect peace and rest that transcends all understanding. And my prayer for each one of you, my friends, is that you will experience such peace as you focus on God's word and his promises for you. Today, I want to look at a time in Caleb's life. And may we be encouraged by how God's faithfulness to Caleb in his later years allowed him to experience this perfect peace as Caleb claimed the promises God had for him. In our message today, we are going to look about a great story about an elderly man named Caleb. But before we get to our text found in Joshua 14, verses 6 to 15, I want to give you a quick overview of what's been happening in the book of Joshua up until this day. The first half of Joshua is full of stories of God leading his people, the Israelites, into the promised land. It started with the miraculous crossing of the Red, the Jordan River, and continued as the Israelites fought and claimed the land. In chapters 10 and 11, it summarizes the military campaign that they had. Chapter 12 is just simply a list of all the kings that the Lord's army had defeated. And that pretty much wraps the first half of the book of Joshua. The second half of the book, however, is about the division of land and how it was allocated to the various tribes of Israel. We aren't going to spend a lot of time in those historical details, although there certainly are some good lessons for us in those archives. But for this morning, we're going to just pull out a couple of the stories that are tucked around all those records. And the first story I want to look at is in chapter 14, verses 6 to 15. Let me read them to you. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gigal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea about you and me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. 
But my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the people's hearts melt in fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet has walked will be your inheritance and that all your children forever because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord is helping me and I will drive them out just as he said. Then Joshua blessed Caleb and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron had belonged to Caleb ever since because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel wholeheartedly. Then the land had rest from war. You know, in order for us to understand what's happening in this passage, I want to dig deep into the background behind this story. You know, at first glance, as you heard me read it, the story, it doesn't seem too remarkable, does it? It's just another leader showing up and asking for his allotment of the land. But if we dig a little bit and understand the background, the uniqueness really starts to shine through. You know, the story of Caleb begins 45 years earlier in the time of Moses. Caleb was one of the original 12 spies sent into the promised land by Moses. The ones who spent 40, day, 40 days in the promised land spying out the land and its inhabitants. In order to report back to Moses and the people about what they would face when they entered. Now, if you recall that story found in Numbers chapter 13, verses 27 to 28, the 12 spies returned and reported to all the people. This is what they said. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here's the fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. As a result of this report that the spies gave, the people were terrified, and they didn't believe that God would deliver the land to them safely. And so they rebelled against the Lord and were consequently sent back into the desert for 40 years until all of those who didn't believe passed away and Joshua took over and brought the new generation into the promised land. Now, not all 12 spies agreed with the proposed course of action. Two of them, that's Joshua and Caleb, dissented. In fact, they tried to encourage the people to have faith and to believe in God's promise. Numbers 13.30 says, Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we certainly can do it. But the 10 without faith stirred up the people with horror stories about the land, creating fear and disbelief, so they rebelled. You know, there's one other critical detail in the reporting of the spies that illuminates the story we find in Joshua 14. In reporting of the inhabitants of the lands, the spies proclaimed to Moses, we even saw descendants of Anak living there, the people of great size. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Who were these descendants of Anak? Well, it's difficult to recreate exactly. However, it does tell us that 
they came from a people called the Nephilim. We first have mention of them in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 4, where it tells us that they were heroes of old, men of renown. It is likely they even had some supernatural lineage, as that same verse tells us that they were the sons of God, went to the daughters of men and had children by them. Whatever the origin, we know that when Moses sent the spies into the land, they saw descendants of Anak still in the land, and they were still strong, fearsome, and very large. Remember, the spies actually said they felt like grasshoppers before them. So that's the background of the story. Now let's fast forward 45 years. Here's Caleb, no longer that 40-year-old going into the promised land to be a spy. Now we find him, he's 85 years old, and he's already survived wandering around the desert for 40 years, having fought alongside Joshua as they took the promised land, and now he has come to claim the promise of God. And in verses 6 and 9, we find Caleb laying out the facts. He's reminding Joshua that he's been faithful and followed God even when all the others had not. And then we find in verse 9, Caleb claims the promise and Moses had made to him and his descendants because of his faithfulness to God wholeheartedly. Having laid the groundwork, Caleb made his request. I gotta love verse 10. Caleb first starts off by reporting his age. He's getting up there in years. 85 years old. That's pretty old. But yet again, Caleb has proven his faithfulness. He had served the Lord for his entire life, and now he felt it was time to claim the promise God made to him through Moses. But let me pause there for just a minute. Indulge me, will you? Wouldn't we understand if Caleb was a little tired? I don't know about you, but wouldn't it make sense for him to retreat to the background a little bit more? Let the young, exuberant warriors take over? Maybe retire to a place like Kama and live out his last years playing bingo or sipping iced tea in the garden area and telling stories about how hard those desert years were? You know, we sort of expect Caleb to continue on from verse 10 by saying, yes, I'm 85 now, and the Lord promised me some land to settle in, and he knows I've earned it. So this needs to be your next priority for your soldiers, Joshua. Send them up right away to clear the way for me and my descendants. Fight off all the bad guys and tell them to make sure the iced tea is cool. I'll wait over here in my lazy boy chair until they're all done. Well, that's not what happened. That's not what Caleb said. Listen to it again in verses 11 and 12. Instead of wanting to retire, Caleb wants to stay in the game. He still has health. He still has his energy and he still has the desire. And yet again, he picks the greatest battle. This is the part of the story that really excites me, doesn't it you? Here's this old guy taking on the giants. He says, give me this hill country with the Anakites and their large fortified cities. The Lord is helping me. I will drive them out just as he said. And instead of sitting back at the end of his life, Caleb takes on the biggest challenge. What do we learn from his story? Well, my first takeaway is that I think we can all in this room, we're all in our 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, that we're never done until God takes us home. And I believe that as long as God gives us breath, there's something he still wants each and every one of us to do. May it be to know him more. Maybe it's to worship him more. Maybe it's to continue to use the gifts God has given us to serve in his kingdom. Caleb was 85. 
and took on the biggest enemy in the promised land. The second, you know, this tells me that it doesn't matter how old we are. You could be 50 in your 50s like me, or 70, 85, or 100. As long as you have life, God has something for you. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly what that is. That's between you and God. But what I do want to affirm is that God isn't finished with you yet until that moment he takes you home. Secondly, the thing I think we learned through this story is God prepares us and he's preparing you for today's task your entire life. In many ways, Caleb was the perfect person to lead the fight against the giants. He probably had the most experience. Obviously, he had seen the most battles. And practically speaking, he had spent 45 years waiting for this opportunity. This reminds me that whatever we face today, God is preparing us for such a time as this. And I take comfort from this. I draw strength from the realization that whatever hurdles I face, God has been preparing and equipping me to meet them. He's in control. He knows what he's doing, and he will walk with me to handle the situations of life that I face. It's always difficult in the midst of challenging situations to see how God has been preparing us for, us for that situation, then later to see how that situation prepares us for the next one. And that's why I like to talk about how great God is, how God is always in control, how he's the manager of the universe, and how I know that he is good. It gives me strength, hope, and the ability to relax in God's promises. Maybe for you, too, you've had to wait 45 years or are still in the process of waiting to see God's promise fulfilled. And even in that time, when it comes to be fulfilled, you might have to get in and fight for it like Caleb. You know, Caleb waited 45 years to experience the promise of God come true in his life. We know from the story that he never forgot the words God said to him through Moses, and that when the time was right, he stepped forward to claim that promise. My friends, let me ask you, do you have the same amount of patience to wait for God's timing to keep his promises to you, like Caleb? I love how Caleb was active in his claiming the promise of God, but I was also challenged by it. I don't know about you, but I often want to claim the promises of God like kids do in asking for gifts from Santa. I am hoping that things will just show up in my life without any effort on my part. Yet, Caleb models for us the opposite approach. To claim the promise of God by acting like there was nothing that would stand in the way of God keeping his promise. It didn't matter that he was 85 years old. It didn't matter that the Anakites were the biggest and most intimidating opposition in the promised land. All that mattered to Caleb was that God made him a promise. So Caleb grabbed his sword and headed off to the hills to defeat them. My friends, this is great faith. To act on the promises of God before we see evidence of their fulfillment. To stand up and say, God has promised this, so I'm going to live it. Another example of this is found in Matthew 7, 7, where it says, God promises that those who seek him will find him. It says in Mark 13, 11, that he promised that when we have the opportunity to share our faith, if we simply open our mouths, his spirit will put the words on our lips. And in John 8, 32, he promised to teach us the truth and to set us free by that truth. Sometimes God's promises appear instantly and without any action on our part. But more often, I believe, we have to act in faith in order to see the fullness of God's promises in our lives. Like Caleb, we have to march off into battle so that we can claim God's promises of victory. You might be wondering how this battle turned out for Caleb. We read the answer over in chapter 15, verses 13 to 17. God was faithful. After 45 years and with a soldier who was 85 years old, 
the mighty giants were destroyed. May each one of us be challenged by Caleb's example that know that God isn't finished with you until he calls you home. You might actively claim the promises of God. Will you fight the toughest battles now? And what are those, you might wonder? There are battles fought in prayer, my friends. I ask each one of you to pray for your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids, the staff at CAMA, but most of all, will you pray for your CAMA community that the love of Jesus might break through the resistance and bring light to those that don't know him and that he will provide the peace that our world is in so desperate need in, in light of everything that's going on. As I think about the modern equivalent of the Anakites might be and how to fight the giants of today, I recognize that the battles are only going to be won and fought in prayer. And that's why I ask that all of us would pray. As I close, I want to leave you with one final story. You know, recently I had the privilege of attending a memorial service for my friend's dad. I never met him in person, but as his family and friends shared about his life, I got a picture of how God had really worked in his life in later years. It seemed like God had already gotten a hold of him and recreated him and made him new all after he retired. There were numerous stories of how God had used him mightily in his older years, stories of influencing young people, working for reconciliation, seeing gifts of generosity multiplied 30 fold. He reminded me a lot of Caleb, claiming God's promise and fighting alongside God even in his later years. I was incredibly encouraged by this celebration of life service and reminded that God honestly doesn't care how old we are. He cares that our hearts are his and that he is the focus of our lives. And when that's the case, my friend, it doesn't matter what giants we face, God will be victorious. Let me pray for you as we close, and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Father, I just want to thank you for my friends today, and I pray, Father, that they would experience your perfect peace that passes all understanding. And may we all be like Caleb, trust you in your words, and claim the promises of your word over our lives and over our situations. I just want to entrust them into your care, help them to pray for those around them, knowing that that is how we will fight and win the battles on your behalf. So, Lord, I want to commit and trust each person into your loving care now. In Jesus' precious name, and all God's people said, Amen. Take care, my friends.